This is an ACR Global Fix EPIRB. Its batteries expired in 2015. Now it still tests good. You can tell this by raising this guy and seeing that it reaches green. But it costs about $270 to service. Now please keep in mind, these devices are not designed to be user serviceable. The fact that these devices were made without user serviceable batteries is such an asshole move on behalf of the manufacturer, but they have changed. New devices come with user serviceable batteries, and you should think of this as little more than a helpful exercise in recycling as a secondary or backup EPIRB. A new EPIRB is $450, and the new models actually come with a user serviceable battery. So the math becomes pretty obvious. It's really not worth getting these things serviced anymore. However, plenty of people do have old EPIRBs lying around. So I wanted to look into what it would take to replace the batteries as an end user, rather than sending it away to a service center. And it turns out it's remarkably simple. Now this is not a replacement for an EPIRB service. It would not be considered a valid beacon under offshore racing rules. Uh, it would not be recommended for an offshore passage. For any upcoming trips, I always carry a primary safety device that is in date. And really this is just useful as a sort of a secondary. Uh, nice to have an EPIRB with that 48 hour battery life that comes with these guys. This still tests good, which means it's probably going to still transmit for a period of time. Uh, but how long that will be, I really don't know. So let's crack this thing open and see just how easy it is to replace the battery and lubricate the gaskets that are inside. The first thing I'm going to do is remove these four screws, simple Phillips screws, which is nice. I guess they expect these to be serviceable. Let's see if something does go wrong. Notice that each screw has an O-ring. Careful not to lose these. Once the four screws are off, you can pull the two halves apart. You'll notice that there's this connector cable coming from the battery into the body of the device. This simply pulls out, like so. And now we can use this piece of string to remove the battery. It takes a little bit of force. If we pull this pouch apart, we find the battery inside. These battery packs can be built by buying these batteries separately. So you could rebuild this battery pack once you're comfortable with a soldering iron for about $45. It does involve removing these pieces of metal strip and soldering new connectors on each end. However, I opted to buy a brand new battery fully built, figuring that will be more reliable. So this should be a drop-in replacement, super simple. I'm gonna put the battery into the pouch. Press the battery into the device. Add back in this foam. Now let's take a look at the top of the device. Here, is a gasket. This guy needs to be kept waterproof and free of any dirt or grime. I'm cleaning it between my thumbs. I'm sure there's probably a better technique for this. And then I'm just going to apply a little bit of super lube, which is a gasket lubricant. Also food grade for bonus points. Why it needs to be food grade, I don't know. I suspect the factory service on these devices probably replaces the gasket. I'm going to press the gasket back into the top. And I'm also going to lubricate the gasket on the four screws. Now we're going to put the two halves together again. We'll reattach the connector, being careful to note which way it inserts into the socket. Seat the unit back down, being careful not to crush the gasket, making sure it's making a good seal all the way around, and then screw it all back together. Now 
Much like a car tire, I'm going to tighten these in a star pattern. No idea if that's important, but tightening down along the diagonal may make sure that we apply pressure evenly. So that's it. Now let's test it out. And it still tests as good.